Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're gonna be showing you how you could make asymmetrical grids easily with loss. Now, these are gonna be grids where your columns aren't necessarily going to be the same width. Now, there's some small challenges that come along with that that we'll address, but let's get going on that right now. So in the last video, we showed you how to get some basic grids going. We showed you how to work with something called cycle, which sort of allows you to say, hey, every few of these items remove the uh, margin on the right to allow it to reflow. So let's actually come back and let's modify this uh, one third uh, cycle to it was 15 pixels just to be one third once more. And now let's come back to our page and refresh. You can see we have a nice grid going here. So that's pretty awesome, right? But let's say we wanted some sort of an asymmetrical grid. If you view something like Suzy, you know that working with asymmetrical grids is pretty easy in those systems. However, let's uh, see how easy that is using Lost. Now, the thing about an asymmetrical grid is that you need to use the concept of sort of rows rather than having uh, flowing objects, right? Because it's going to be uh, one column, then an uneven column, and then another column, we're going to be removing the cycle entirely. And it's going to be using the fact that there's a last item to remove the margin. So to see what I mean in action, let's come in here and I'm going to reset this uh, HTML to only have three items in it. So we come back here. So we got three items, right? Okay, now let's make the one in the middle one half of the width and let's make the other two, let's make those one uh, quarter of the width. So way we can do that is simply by coming in here and I'm gonna just say colon nth child. And then I can say the second item, I want you to be one half. Now if we come up here, I'll want all of the other items to be one quarter. Now we come back to our page and refresh and you got and you can see we have some sort of wonkiness here. We have the first item, which is clearly a quarter, and then we have these two, which it's getting uh, this one with the cycle in it. And because of the cycle, it's uh, giving this a margin right of nothing. And then the last one, it's also not giving a margin right either because it's the last in the container. So you can see these are sort of butted up against each other. So how can we get rid of this? Well. We can actually do this simply by coming in here and saying, hey, just don't cycle these because we're not doing multiple rows. So by placing a zero after the division here, we basically are saying, uh, don't worry about the cycle and only sort of remove the margin on the last child. So now, as you can see, we have grid item, larger grid item, and then the last grid item. Now, what would you expect to happen if we just duplicated all of these and added a whole nother row? So let's save this and let's refresh. And as you can see, it gets messed up. Uh, basically, this approach is working if you're having a row of divs and not necessarily multiple rows within one container. So let's go ahead and fix that just by copying this entire section like so, pasting that in there, refresh. And now you can see we have multiple grids because essentially we have a section here, which is serving as a row. Then we have our row items. Then we have another row with our row items. So these are sort of how you do asymmetrical grids using lost. You can use this nth child or you can give this specific item a different class to modify the actual division and sizing here. So there we have it, asymmetrical grids in law. Now, if this is something that you're doing throughout, instead of setting the cycle to zero all of the time, you can actually just completely uh, turn off the cycle for your entire project if you'd like. So we can actually turn off the cycle for our entire project using a variable. We can just say at lost and then we can say cycle is none. Okay, so that's going to be a setting that allows us to not have to define any sort of cycle here. We can simply get rid of these zeros like so. And as you can see, when we refresh our page, everything is the exact same because that 
uh, cycle property is being set to none. So we can get rid of that. And as you can see, it breaks it once more. Okay. Let's set this back here. I don't want to uh, leave that cycle setting to none all the time. Okay. And you can see we have a fully functional grid once again. Okay, so as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. In the next video, we're going to be talking about responsive grids using Lost, and then we're going to get into some of the uh, more different grids that Lost offers, like vertical grids and things like that. We're going to be talking about the Flexbox fallback, and then how you can make Lost grid work on to browsers as far back as IE8. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video, or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.